So more than likely, you've got a long crank situation on your E90. And if you take a look right in there, that little circular metal thing, that is your fuel pressure regulator. It is inside the fuel tank on this assembly, which is on the driver's side, all right? And access it from under your, your uh, rear seat, okay? And that's the most critical information you're probably gonna need, but there's a lot of good tips loaded in this video, so if you stick with it, we'll get you what you need to get the job done right, okay? This is a 2006 325i, a little customized by a friend of mine, um, Sydney Hansen. Uh, she's a pretty smart young lady, and she has her taste the way she likes it on her car. Um, that's her Instagram. So if you guys want to follow her on Instagram, um, she said that she would like that very much. Um, so getting into it, like I said, long crank. That's the reason we're changing this thing. Okay. There is also a few other issues that could cause this. You could have leaking injectors. She's already done it. And uh, you would have some other issues as well to go along with that. Um, on the passenger side of the car behind the rear seat, um, this is a one piece seat that does not fold. Otherwise I would have took it out so you guys could see it. But um, we're kind of pressed for time. So I'll just tell you about it. There is the fuel pump module behind that corner over there. And uh, it's called an EKPS. And they're known to overheat and burn out. Um, there are a couple little modifications you can do to that. There's some paste um, that you can apply behind the module on the back of it where it bolts up to its little bracket so it can transfer heat out of the module to the bracket. Um, there's also an internal modification you can do. And you can also upgrade to uh, EKPS3, which I think is the most updated part. Um, and you'll have to do some coding to do that. Um, so if you find one that's used and it's a close match for your car, some people on the forums have said that that has solved um, their fuel pump issues um, without programming. So that's a maybe, that's up to you if you want to take that risk. I would always have the part coded to my vehicle so I don't have future problems. Anyway, um, I want to show you guys a little bit about what I do to remove this unit. Um, you'll see a piece of wire sticking out right here. Um, there are some lines that go from this unit on this side, which has the regulator and a float for this side of the tank, because it, it saddles over the drive shaft. So you have to get the lines up over that saddle and over to the other side. So the way I do it is when I'm pulling the lines out, I connect my stainless steel wire to one of the hoses and draw it on through and tie it off on that side somewhere where it's not going to scratch the paint or anything like that i use the little door stopper inside there and pull it through now you have something to help you guide those hoses back through to the other side all right now, a lot of guys don't use a hammer and a chisel and beat that ring off it well these tanks they're um they're like a nylon so if you start beating on that too hard you know there's a chance you could do damage and obviously you're going to want to replace the o-rings i'll show you guys all that um here in a second i also want to show you obviously take some precautions so that way when you draw it out there will be a little bit of fuel leaking so what you want to do is stop about halfway out and hold that unit high so you can allow the fuel to drain back into the tank um i'll show some pictures and try to add some text i'll try to edit that into there on the, the steps i took to get to this point all right but mainly in, in the gist of it was uh, lift up the rear seat um, and then lift up this this carpet here. I secured it with the seat belts and I just put a zip tie, not too tight, but just enough that it'll keep this up out of the way. Um, I've got that fan up there going and then I've got that fan up there going and that pumps air to the outside. So, and I got another door over here open for fresh air so always keep some, some air moving. Obviously, that's a great idea. If you happen to have a lot of fuel in the tank when you're doing this, you can use a little pump, a couple buckets with lids. Obviously, no smoking when you're dealing with fuel. That's never a good idea, right? It's not the fuel, it's the vapor, all right? Once you get to that lower explosive limit, you're in trouble, all right? So just be cautious about what you're doing. Think about static as well. Um, especially with all this fabric around, you don't want to be rubbing up on it 
Um, another good thing to do is, is um, touch this with your bare skin and just, you know, kind of ground yourself before you go in. Just like you would do at the gas station, that's a really good idea if you have cloth seats to, uh, to ground yourself before you go and pump fuel. All right, anyhow, let's continue on to the tools then. Um, oh, before we go on to that, I wanna show you guys something else. See, I put a little mark right there. I'm gonna wipe that off when I'm done. But the idea is that when I put this ring back on, I'll get it right back to where it was from the factory, all right? And I'll get it nice and snug. One of the special tools you're gonna need, I say need, but you can do it with a hammer and a, and a decent sized uh, punch. I wouldn't use a chisel because you can see how thin these are. You use the chisel, you're gonna take them off. So you use a nice sized punch and a hammer. Let me see if I can demonstrate like that. And you spin this thing to the left. But if you're gonna do it that way, I would hit it on this side and hit it on this side. You know what I mean? And keep distributing it. Don't just keep hitting one side because you may wedge it and make it extra tight to try to you know, get that initial movement out of it to break it free. So kind of switch sides if you're gonna do it that way. That's how I would do it. All right, so you would need that and a hammer then instead of the special toolkit, which is that number right there, okay, from AutoZone, costs you about a hundred bucks and you get every penny of it back when you take it back. The only thing you really need from the toolkit though is this guy right here. So if you could find just this online, I mean, it'd be good to have if you work on beamers a lot, right? <laughs> so I think I'm gonna hang on to this kit because I've done quite a few fuel pumps and, and have had to get access. So uh, you set it up the right width and then you put it on here like so. And it just makes your life so much easier. You're not in there hammering on anything. I put an adapter in it so I could get it to a half inch. And the only reason I used the extension was to get the height and I'll show you in the car so you get the idea. Okay, something like this. Give me some height so I have some room. And then what I did was I, when I put the ratchet on there, I positioned the ratchet comfortably. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that too. You know, position the ratchet to where you can push down on the head of the ratchet and pull on it comfortably to loosen that, okay? But you gotta push down pretty good to keep that tool gripping those little tangs on there and then you'll break it free. No problem, easy, all right? So before you even take that loose, um, clean it and mark that area. That's what I did, okay? I used some glass cleaner and, and a shop vac. You don't wanna use brake clean because it's not always plastic safe. And if you're reusing this side, which most people will be, um, you don't want to spray a bunch of brake clean on this part that deals with high pressure fuel and then have it crack and, uh, and leak everywhere, okay? Now it is indexed, so you can only put it back in one way. And then those two legs have specific holds on the uh, fuel pump float down here. This little deal here. You have these two specific spots where that needs to go, all right? And the position you want it in, going back together, it's gonna be like this, okay? So you get those in there. It's a little tricky, but it's not impossible, all right? You just gotta have some patience and take your time. This connector here, keeps trying to get away from me. This one goes more towards the passenger side, okay? You'll have to remove the ring first before you can tuck this line down in here, okay? Don't twist on it too hard. Make sure the rest of the line back here is cooperating with you before you break it. All right, so get the ring out first. And then once you've got that out, you're gonna have to be holding the pump, the top of the unit here down against that spring in order to take that ring out. Okay, once you get that ring out, then you can tuck this in right here in this area is where I was able to get it to slip in and then back a little bit, all right? So it takes a little, a little bit of weaseling in this area to get it, but you can, all right? Now the three lines that come across from the other side one of them connects right there. So be gentle with that one. I use the long needle nose pliers to squeeze the quick release on it to release it. Um, and then you have one line that goes in here. That one had a white line on it, a white stripe. And then you got another one that goes in right here. And those just uh, clip into place right there uh, to deliver fuel from the other side here, okay? If that makes sense, there's like a suction jet feature. Then you'll see there's another line down in there 
that connects to the big port right here on the bottom, okay? And then there's a little line that is going to connect up here on top as well. So, and that one is right here, tucked over to the side too. Small one with a little quick release. You just push in on that one. All right, the other side's flat. There's nothing to push on, it's just that one side. And uh, push it in. I like to push in on them a little bit first, then push in on this little tang, and then pull it back out, okay? Clean them, I like to lubricate um, where they're gonna slide onto, that way the O-ring doesn't roll and tear, okay? So be careful about that. And then, uh, Use electrical contact cleaner and clean your connections going back together. Uh, these don't look bad, but you know, never know. And don't go jamming anything in there. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna end up loosening up those connections, okay? And then, so like I said, I tied the wire off to it and I made sure that the end couldn't get snagged on anything going in or out. I used a little electrical tape just to pull it through real quick and make sure just in case I had to pull it back, I didn't leave the end of the wire sticking out like this. I, Pulled it down nice and tight and, and tied it down with electrical tape. So either way that thing had to move through there, it could move and it wouldn't get stuck. All right? And just fish it through. Boom. Other one, fish it back in the same way. Okay, but I will tell you this. This one's got a spring on it too. And you have to push this in, this whole assembly here in, in order to get this thing out. And you can see the way it's shaped. It's pretty pretty crazy the way it's shaped so there's a lot of like zigzagging back and forth and weaseling it along with zigzagging and then uh, you'll take it out all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start a new dance off of that okay so uh, zigzag and weasel all right there you go always replace the o-rings and I always put a little bit of lubrication on there uh, I use this stuff you can use it um, for o-rings I use it you know for just about anything with an o-ring really it's um it's for transmission assembly really but it works really good all right so there it is and obviously put your back seat somewhere where it's not going to get fuel on it and uh damaged and there you have it going back together snake it through put the lines where i showed you and uh and connect them up it's really not that difficult to do all right so here's the one with the stripe on it okay so that's the one that goes on the fuel pump assembly directly below this one. So to make things nice and happy when you're going back together, put this one in first, then connect this one to the fuel pump. And don't push too hard, concentrate when you're doing it um, and lubricate that stem so it slides right on there nice and easy. Um, and, then, uh, and then clip this on and listen for that um, or feel for that click so you know that it's secure and give it a light tug to make sure because you don't want that coming off of there once you got everything all closed up. Um, another thing I like to do, just because it's new doesn't mean that it's going to work, it's going to be leak free. So, you know, what new stands for, it never ever worked, right? So what I like to do is I'll leave these caps open, I'll connect everything up. And um, I'll, when I say caps, I mean these, okay? Not the fuel tank. So I'll connect everything else up, tighten my locking rings back in to my marks. Um, and I'll make the electrical connections, but I'll leave these caps open and run the vehicle and check for leaks, okay? And I'll also uh, run the fuel pressure test up there at the rail and check for drop. Make sure that I hold at least uh, 65 PSI for about 20 minutes, all right? So that's about it. Um, I've been promising you to go over the tools and I haven't, but so here we go. This is everything that I have out. 10 millimeter to take those caps off. Um, there's four nuts on each side and then I use a magnet tray right there, as you can see. So you end up with eight nuts in a magnet tray. You don't have to worry about whether or not you drop them in the tank, okay? Um, be careful, don't put any, don't leave all your tools and stuff there while you're working because you don't want anything to fall into the tank and damage it, okay? Or contaminate it. That's another thing. Look for contamination while you're in there. All right, so zip tie to hold the seatbelts together. Keep that carpet up out of your way. Believe it or not, that can be a real pain in the rear if that carpet keeps flapping down and then you get fuel all over it and the interior of the car is going to smell. So that's also another reason why that blanket is down in there on the floor. Just in case I splashed, her car won't smell like fuel for a week, okay? Electrical tape, we know that's for um, taping the uh, stainless steel wire so it doesn't gouge anything in the tank. Half inch ratchet, adapter, extension, the tool kit, right? Or the punch back there with a the hammer. Not a chisel, but a punch, right? Um, this pick just helped me to just uh, 
pull this up out of place, all right? And then I used a little pick to get the O-rings out once I got the, uh, once I got everything else out of the way. Um, some wire snips, obviously, that'll help you to cut the zip tie when you're done, putting everything back, and then also to cut some of that uh, stainless steel wire. If you choose to go that route, um, if you just got some fuel line laying around, you could probably use that too. But I like that real slim wire. I bend it to where it's nice and straight. And then that way I have a real easy time maneuvering it through the tank and out the other side, okay? Um, little flathead screwdriver, that helped out with disconnecting um, one of the connectors, uh, long needle nose. This helped out with disconnecting another uh, one of them. And the 12 millimeter wrench is just here to secure these in this position here, okay? And um, that way it works with the locking ring real good. And I positioned it to where we're catching the big part of it right here. All right, the tall part of it. That's what I want it to be on, not the, not the short part. So position this carefully to where you get a nice grip and you don't slip and, and you know fall and hit something or hurt yourself, all right? So that's about it. That stuff, a good light, you know, this little headlight that I bought at Lowe's, kind of a cheap one, but it works. AAA batteries. Um, my rechargeable finally gave up on me after a bunch of years. Uh, it was a good light. Um, rest in peace. It's up here in the bone pile. <laughs> it was a stream light. Anyway, um, I used the mirror to just look um, into the tank uh, up over the hump to see how the lines were positioned so I could get them kind of similar going back in. All right, so, um, so, you know, you could look at yours and see how it's positioned and try to get it about the same way so everything sits nice and happy when you go back together and you don't have any kind of binding all right so hopefully this will help you uh, get through this job um the part i want to say was about 200 bucks uh from the dealer uh, i got a little bit of a discount there with those guys uh, by the way if you're ever in california uh bmw murrieta uh, those parts guys over there are the best uh don aka mr bobblehead um <laughs> If you ever go there and you see him, ask him why they call him Mr. Bobblehead. Uh, and then you got Isaac. Um, there's a whole bunch of really cool guys over there. Jim, um, there's a lot, there's a lot. So I've never had a problem with those guys. And if I ever had a problem with the park, they back me up. So I'll put a little plug for him, why not? All right, and then one more time, Sydney Hansen, all right. She's got a, a knack for doing some nice stuff on these cars, that's for sure, so. Um, check her out on Instagram and uh, hopefully you guys like the video. I know I ramble a lot, but hopefully I got you the information you need. No intro music. Be safe, wear a mask, don't drink and drive. Peace.